seated comfortably in any meditative seated posture. With spine upright, shoulders tucked back, eyes gently closed. Back of the head in line with the spine. We try to slowly withdraw our minds to look at that vast infinite space in front of our closed eyes. To look at colors, shadowy movements, darkness or light. From this vastness called Chidakash, after acknowledging what we see here, whether it is colors, shadowy movements, darkness, or light, we slowly taper the awareness to the eyebrow center. At the Bhumadhyaya, to visualize a candle flame there. A steady candle flame. If you are a beginner, you can also place your fingertips at the eyebrow center to not only intensify the awareness, but to stop the mind from wandering. We want to make sure we are finishers, even if we are beginners. Each one of us is a finisher. Keeping intensified awareness on this candle flame We now do an inverted V shape Anulom Vilom Pranayam visualization, where we inhale from the left nostril without physically closing the right with the thumb, exhale from the right without physically closing the left with the ring finger, and we then inhale from the right, exhale from the left. With awareness intensified at the Bhumadhyaya, the eyebrow center. We are working on our dopamine, our secretions, our blood pressure. Our serotonin secretions, dopamine, balancing low blood pressure into medium and high into the right one. Inhale from the left nostril. Pause at the eyebrow center on that flame for a moment in a shunya. Exhale from the right. Inhale from the right. Be in a shunya at the eyebrow center. Make sure that candle flame is steady and well lit. Exhale from the left. Continue. An armless, mudraless, anulom vilom pranayam with chidakash, visualization, coming to the eyebrow center at the candle flame, 
a neat, clear, inverted V shape to balance our secretions, our dopamine, our blood pressures, our breaths. making sure our inhaled and exhaled air are saying a hello to the candle flame at the Bhumadya. Let's add Ujjayi, the throat breath, to this so that we multiply the benefits. Rub inhaled and exhaled air at the throat pit as you do Anulom Vilom Pranayam, which is armless. making sure this ujjayi fills up our lungs with oxygenated air as we inhale from the left nostril, touching upon the bhu madhya at the candle flame and exhale from the right. A sound full ujjayi. If someone was sitting next to us, he can hear it. And let this inhale of Ujjayi soundfully drag air in from the right nostril again, touch upon the candle flame and come out from the left nostril. We are gifting ourselves with an armless Anulom Vilom Pranayam with Ujjayi. We want to ensure that although the stare is at the eyebrow center, at the Agya Chakra, at the Bhum Madhya, the stare, which means the mind's eye, the awareness is on the inverted V shape and the filling and the emptying of the rib cage of the lungs. As we inhale and exhale in Ujjayi these last three times, doing Anulom Vilom Pranayams, three sets.
After finishing these last three sets, check if a blocked nostril opened up. Although we didn't use any force here. Celebrate both open nostrils or continue working on opening a blocked nostril, intensifying the awareness for one more round. We're now going to do alternate nostril, Kapalbhati and Bhastrika. Closing the right nostril with Nasagraha Mudra. Thumb closing the right nostril. Just touch, don't press. And keeping the ring finger and the little finger open. We do 11 Bhastrikas from the left nostril, regardless of whether it is open or closed. Eleven. We then change, which means we close the left nostril and we do 21 Kapalbhati from the right. Exhale actively. A beginner will keep his palm on the tummy so that he knows that the tummy is going in with every exhalation. 21 Kapalbhati. From the right nostril itself now, we will do 11 Bhastrika. We will close the right nostril with our thumb and we will do 21 Kapalbhati from the left. Discontinue, bring the hands down. For those of us who are comfortable in sitting in Vajrasana, we will now sit in Vajrasana with knees apart. With palms, on the knees, elbows out like wings. We are going to do swan pranayam. We're going to stick our tongue out as much as possible. Bring our eyeballs to the nose tip at the eyebrow center in Bhumadhyaya. And we are going to do the panting dog pranayam, inhaling and exhaling actively. <laughs> the panting dog pranayam in Nasagraha Mudra again. The swan pranayam has certain contraindications. We should be very aware of the hidden dangers of doing pranayam wrongly. So we're going to change it and make it mellow in case there is dizziness, there is vertigo, there is hammering in the head or the tem temples. <laughs> Mm 
for bringing back low blood pressure back to normal. It's dangerous to have low blood pressure, but it's even more dangerous to do swan pranayam wrongly. So let's do it under our own supervision and the supervision of this tribe. <laughs> Those of us who have not been in practice are going to want to clear their throats. We're going to feel discomfort. We may feel exhaustion. Swan pranayam to clear the mucus from the throat to balance our dopamines, to balance our blood pressure, to improve our bhastrikas and kapalabhatis and hence to get multiple benefits from them all. Making sure the inhalations are as active as the exhalations, which means <laughs> is wrong, <laughs> is not complete. <laughs> is correct and complete. This continues Shwan Pranayam. Continue sitting in a spread knee, Vajrasan. We're doing a yoga with a twist. Twist completely to the right, placing your left palm on your right knee. Twist well. More, more, more. Shoulders have to be parallel to the wall on the right. First, turn and look back. Then turn completely, bring your chin over your shoulder blade. If you don't belong to this tribe of Vijal's Yoga Divine, remember, try to remember the last time you twisted. Besides this tribe of 53 of us twisting together, when did we twist last? We messed up the secretions of the ductless glands of the endocrine system. And here in this twist, we are going to do 21 kapal bhatis, counting in reverse order, descending order, 21, pulling the tummy in with every exhalation. I just finished my 21 Kapal Bhati and I was counting them in a descending order. I'm going to continue staying twisted here on my right with my chin chasing my shoulder blade on the left. And I'm now going to do 11 Bhastrikas, the bellows breath. Try always to count these numbers in a descending order so that we work on Alzheimer's forgetfulness and we never ever say, oh God, I keep forgetting. We come back now to twist to the other side. 21 Kapalabhatis only after shoulders are parallel to that wall on the left. Head is really turned back. If you feel it's not turned good enough, we do it. We try what we did the other side. Turn back, then turn in front. 21 Kapalpati. That's correct. I just got to one. How about you? 11 Bhastrika. Let's count them in a descending order. On finishing 11, we come back to the center. We bring our palms on our knees again. Elbows are out. Total Dadagiri posture. Knees are apart. And we inhale fully. 
Exhale, completely come in a chin lock. Simultaneously, we pull our belly in. We put our navel into our tailbone. And we do Agni Sar. Abdomen out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. This is how it goes. Constipation ki aisi ki tesi. Let's wake up all those organs in the gut, in the pit, in the jathar, in the stomach, in the abdomen, whatever you call this Manipur, the jewel town. Come back inhaling. Exhale completely, come in a chin lock again. Tummy is in, navel has gone towards the tailbone. Hold the exhalation. Abdomen out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. The moment you want to inhale, discontinue the Agni Sar. Inhale fully. Third round, the last one. And Agni Sar too has certain contraindications or certain hidden dangers. We won't overdo it. It's mainly for the digestive fire, for constipation, for excreting vegetable matter, not defecating properly at one go, and for absorbing the nutrients from whatever we eat. What more do we want? Agnis are here. Inhale fully. Exhale, tummy in, navel to tailbone. Hold the Bahir Kumbhak, the exhalation. The moment you want to inhale, don't wait for an impending need to inhale. Discontinue Agni Sar and gently inhale fully. Now collect the knees so you are in a Virasan. Separate the heels and sit down on your yoga mats. So the entire pelvic platform is completely down on your yoga mats and heels are apart. For those of you who have knee problems, do not sit in this posture. For those of you who've been through surgeries, do not sit in this posture. And sitting in Virasan now, we do what is extremely effective for insomnia, for sleep disorders, for depression, for panic attacks. Inhale fully. Bring your fingertips on either side of your nose, closing your eyelids, plug your ears closed, make a humming sound, exhaling, feeling the vibrations on the frontal part of the face. You will not be able to hear me. So we finish off with three rounds of the humming bee, Brahmari Pranayam. Inhale, plug the ears closed. Hmm. 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 
Brahmari pranayam, the humming bee pranayam, for sleep disorders, for insomnia, for panic attacks, for tinnitus that is ringing in the ears. There are several types of tinnitus. We work on reversing that and yes, it can happen. I myself am, am an example of completely overcoming tinnitus. No ENT specialist check from the best of the best of the best will say that yes, tinnitus can go away. I myself had huge ringing in the ears and tinnitus a few years back. And I completely overcame it with Brahmari Pranayam and two or three other similar techniques. Please remember, if you don't get it, come and take it from me. Any healing for that matter. It's a promise I give you. And with this, we now come to a pranayam of your choice. From the energizing, vitalizing, to the stabilizing, to the tranquilizing, to the cooling, to even the warming, Agnisar. 